are you buying that the Dolphins can reach the Super Bowl? I think they can. I'm not saying they're the favorite, but I definitely, I think when you have an offense that explosive, you can pull it off. Now, obviously, if you're the opposition, get some pressure on Tua Tungabaloa because they can compromise them. The health of Tyreek Hill has been questionable. He's got hurt a couple of times over the last few weeks. We've got to monitor that. But even then, he still blows by everybody. He's just that explosive. He's that great. And then Jalen Ramsey had two interceptions yesterday. I mean, you know that Miami can make some noise. Their offense hasn't looked quite as explosive in a few of the last, in over the last few weeks. But when you're explosive, you're explosive. So even when you don't show up on a particular week, that doesn't negate the fact that the very next week you can show up and make that kind of noise. I got to keep my eyes on that. And then remember, no one is particularly running away with the conference. So it's still an outside shot that Miami can get home field advantage. Right. And that they could have some playoff games near South Beach. And when that happens, and you don't have to worry about being in inclement weather, that's definitely a plus. But I also can't ignore the fact that you went to Buffalo in a bl damn near blizzard last year. And when you lost that playoff game, it was 34-31 to 31 that you lost. And it was with Skylar Thompson as your quarterback instead of Tua Tungvaloa. And so I look at all of those components and I say to myself, again, I'm not going to give them an edge over everybody else. But could they make a Super Bowl run? I think it's possible. I think it's the most dangerous team in the AFC right now, the Miami Dolphins. Ooh. I think they are really dangerous. And here's why. They are going to be better in the second half of the season defensively than any team. It's coming. You can see Vic Fangio's defense. He knows how to attack an offense. He knows how to make an offense play left-handed. They've got their front seven back, and they can cover in the back end. They're faster on defense. You, they worry me in terms of their ability to be physical with their offense, but they can run the football. Really Dolphins, well. yeah. Big time win. Diva, what happens? Yeah. Big time win. Diva, what you see from two and the boys that make you believe we're still going to go on a run? Jalen Ramsey makes an absurd yeah. play to yeah. end that thing. Defense seemingly getting better. Two and miss some balls though that he doesn't normally miss. Are we worried? Uh, no, I'm not worried. About you guys had some self-inflicted wounds, some key injuries. How are you still able to get this win in spite of all the adversity you faced? Man, the defense carried us throughout that second half. Um, you know, we, we were able to lean on those guys. We weren't able to get things going. There's a lot of things that we know we have to go back and look at and uh, try to figure out where we can get better um, offensively. But the defense willed, our, willed, willed their way, uh, you know, for us to win this game. And very proud of those guys. Very proud of those guys. You talk about where you can get better offensively. When you look at this offensive line, the seventh different line combination in 10 weeks, what can you say about that unit and the way they're playing? Well, it starts with me. Uh, I got to stop by turning the ball over. Um, I got to make smarter decisions, better decisions with the ball. And uh, when that starts happening, our offense can be better. I want to welcome the new viewers. This is our feature uh, part of the show. And their host, Finn Sammy, aka Finn's Post on X, Steve Hallett, our co host, and esteemed panelists that Finn's TV crew of uh, Eddie Chapel and Matt Armstrong. We're talking about the great escape. Uh, the Dolphins certainly found a way to win the game. Uh, the defense was huge. Jalen Ramsey certainly has changed this Dolphins defense, the whole team for sure. I want to start with Steve. Well, the, well, the question is uh, has the Dolphin defense has taken has overtaken as the dominant force of the unit on the team. Steve. I'm thinking, hold on just a second. Let, give me a moment to think. We have to be comfortable with silence for a little bit. Just enjoy it. I think the best way to say it is on from a quantitative standpoint, when they become a top five defense consistently enough, absolutely. From a qualitative standpoint, I believe that they've come neck and neck with it. And in terms of what they've done, to keep us in games where we had a chance to really lose a, a foothold, I think that they have. I think that they've taken that. So I would say that they're equals. They're what we really hoped that they would have become uh, when we saw Vic Fangio, when we saw Jalen Ramsey before preseason started. So I, it's it, the, you know, cap for life where they're saying, great point. Two straight games, one against one of the top, offenses in the league and another one against you know again the Devonte adams the the josh jacobs in a defense holding any defense or any offense uh scoreless in an entire second half of a game is a tough job find out how many teams do that doing it two games in a row that is a statement and they've done it in an incredible way they've become that swarming defense they've 
the the back end of that defense is so impressive. Kohu had a phenomenal game. Xavier Howard had a great game. We're giving up some of those chunk plays. Hate seeing Devontae Adams get that one touchdown, but like Matt said, he's going to get his. The trick is limiting the number of how many of his that he is able to get, and, and they did that. Jalen Ramsey proving to be everything and more that we hoped he was going to be, and he's two games back coming off of knee surgery. Just absolutely incredible. I think he, what, what do we see out there? He's got a zero passer, passer rating when people are throwing against him. Wow. Give me more of that. Stay healthy. Give me a lot more of that coming down the stretch here. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. If I have to give a game ball to anybody, I know we're not playing the game ball game, game here with us, but I'm going to anyway. Christian Wilkins. His stat line of three total tackles and two solo tackles does absolutely zero justice for the impact that Christian Wilkins played in that game. I watched him, and they sh- they made note of it afterward in the replay and everything. My man was in the backfield trying to sack the quarterback, being held up some, and somehow beat Jerome Baker downfield. How, how many yards downfield was that, 30? Yeah. To be the person to take him down? I'm like, how the hell did that guy do that? So the guy ran all the way up there, fought some people on the D, on the O line, ran all the way down, made the tackle, and then still for the rest of that series continued to be an absolute force. Jalen Phillips interception. Who had the quarterback's feet? Christian Wilkins. My man had a game, and I'm, I have a tough time saying yes, pay him twenty four million dollars a year, but I'd be damned if I'd say he's not earning it right now. How about you, man? What are your thoughts if the Dolphins' defense has overtaken as the dominant unit on the team? It's exciting to see because anybody with, you know, with the vision or any football knowledge can tell that they are coming together. I mentioned in the previous segment the, uh, the interception that Ramsey had in the end zone to seal the game. What's going on out there that made a quarterback decide that he wanted to throw at Jalen Ramsey and not Xavier and Howard, right? Steve just said he, he – you locking them down out there. And this is something that we've talked about weeks ago when, when Jalen Ramsey comes back, you know, the hope that he would be what he was uh, in his, in his previous stops. And I think that's pretty evident. That guy has made his mark. Um, is the, is the Dolphins defense, the, the, the group, the unit now I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. The Dolphins are leading the league in points and yards per game mm-hmm. leading. So let the defense have some fun with this. They've got some INTs they need to catch up on. Mm-hmm. They've got some fumbles that they need to get uh, so that we can shrink that negative turnover differential that Steve mentioned. And listen, that is the stat in the NFL. Turnover differential, you don't win if you're on the wrong side of that. And I'm talking long term. I'm talking playoffs. You don't win. Even in Xbox and Madden's turnover differential, you just don't win. So let the defense be – let them have their their time in the limelight. I'm all for it. Um, And it's exciting. Wilkins, that man did play his tail off. But can we talk just for a second about Jalen Phillips? Yes, I want to share with y'all, you, you three, and anybody who can hear my voice, I want to share with you my football knowledge. I thought it was the worst waste of a first-round pick in the history of the NFL when we selected Jalen Phillips. And I'll admit the reason why is because of my bias against the University of Miami. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I will be the very first. How could I see that coming? I absolutely I thought, what a waste. And, and that goes to show – exactly how much I know when it comes to what the guys who really do this for a living know. Um, <laughs> if, if the ball squirts a different way, he has a touchdown to seal the game at, at the end there. You know, he got caught up in the wash there, the tackle of the sack there. But um, Jalen Phillips, and one last thing, and then we can go uh, over to Eddie. Anybody seen Bradley Chubb lately? Because I see him every, every friggin' week. That dude is playing. Yes. It's exciting, man. Let the defense have their limelight. Yeah, one could say maybe the Dolphins defense even has more talent than the offense. When you see the roster, you see the players, and you go one by one, it should not be a surprise. Uh, I think we talked about that uh, 
the, the beginning of the, of, the, of the season, we had we had high expectations for the defense. But you know, when Ramsey went down, the def- whole defense was not the same. Uh, Eddie, what are your thoughts about is the Dolphins defense has overtaken the you know the the as the dominant uh, unit on the team? Overtaken. <laughs> I don't know. They've caught them. That's for sure. The offense is just going through a little struggling right now because I think their last few games, they've only been averaging 18 points a game. Mm-hmm. But uh, that defense, it's um, it's tough to play against now. I've wanted somebody like Jalen Ramsey forever. Somebody that doesn't sit back there and watch the ball go into the receiver's hands and then tackle them. Mm-hmm. And He's almost like a wide receiver. He catches everything that comes near him. That play in the end zone where he didn't touch the – how he didn't touch the receiver, I don't know. He went around him and jumped and caught the ball. And I, and then I, I know you guys were all praying like I was that <laughs> do not be dead on that field, right? <laughs> Please do not have a broken <laughs> – <shoulder. laughs> or a collarbone, I mean, or separated shoulder. I was yeah. dying. But um, there, I'll tell you, Wilkins has really come on. I mean, he is putting pressure up the middle, and that's where all quarterbacks are vulnerable. Him, uh, Davis is doing a good job stopping the run. Chubb, he's he's double teamed all the time, yes. and he is getting. He's the one that forced him on that. Uh, Interception by Phillips forced him, and then Wilkins grabbed his foot, and then the quarterback should have been called for tripping because he definitely stuck his foot up on Phillips. Um, mm-hmm. I, don't know. I just complain too much about refs, I guess. <laughs> Whatever, because I'm sick of them. Uh, but David Long is playing unbelievable now. I was so mm-hmm. worried about him at first, but so was Big Fangio. But that they're all coming together as a unit. And it's really nice to see, like uh, Steve said, Kohu had a great game. That he is not a big guy, but he sure hits like he's a big guy. He makes the guys pay. Um, so they're definitely they're on the up, and this is when you need the defense. It's yeah. getting near when it's cold. You want that defense to be hitting, and uh, near the playoffs, this is when the good teams' defenses start showing up. Absolutely. Steve, any last thoughts about the, the great escape of the Dolphins' defense uh, saving the day on Sunday? I feel bad. Got to say it. Javon Holland. We've said all these other great players' names. My man still had an incredible game, a really awesome tackle for loss in one of those. Mm-hmm. It really, in terms of the defense, got to give huge credit again. This goes to the point of no second-half points for two straight games. In-game adjustments. Like I said it last week or something, talking about Maverick, you know, sitting back, seeing what the, the other opponents are going to do, and then hitting the game plan, realizing what their strengths are, and then making sure that they can't exploit them anymore. Vic Fangio's done a phenomenal job at those adjustments pretty early on in the game, furthering those adjustments and just really taking away what those teams do best. We're going to have some big challenges coming up here, but I have a lot more confidence. And then, uh, Eddie, you know, to your point, seeing where he launched, where and, and actually Matt was the one said he doesn't know what O'Connell was thinking throwing at him. On that interception, I saw, saw somebody post it up. W- watch it again to see where he leaves the ground and where he lands. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do some math there, figure out. He, he had quite the, the launch point and, and landing there. And I don't think O'Connell was intending to throw at Ramsey. Look at how far and how quickly Ramsey closes on that. A little bit too much arc on that ball, but Ramsey took off and his close on that pass was just out of nowhere. If you take a look at that interception as well, he doesn't catch it cleanly. So he makes the adjustment in midair without any hope of support landing on his feet or anything like that. He didn't catch it. He was able to corral it and secure it so that it was a catch. It was an interception when he nearly died when he hit the ground. Um, I never thought I'd say that there, that Xavier would play with a better cornerback. Jalen Ramsey's the man. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, a lot of disagreements on social media about Mike McDaniel, uh, even between us, uh, my my channel to uh, and David Nation. So there's only one way to settle this. Uh, we're gonna go to Fins TV Court.
Hey Danny, the Fintel, my name is Daniel. He's a big accused of bad situation management. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, Mike my Daniel uh, has some poor, uh, you can say poor uh, decision making this uh, during the, the game. Uh, he went for it on the fourth down, and when the Dolphins uh, offense certainly is not working very well in short yardage situations, uh, he could have go for the field goal, and instead uh, they turn over on downs. Uh, I want to start with you, Eddie. What are your thoughts about uh, the defending here? Is Mike McDaniel having problems uh, with bad uh, game management? All right. If you have a coach on the three-yard line and it's fourth and one and he doesn't go for it, I don't want that guy as my coach. <laughs> I do not want him because the worst thing that can happen is what happened and you're pinning that team deep. Do I like the play call? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Now, do I kind of understand where he's coming from? Because of them two guards at first weren't doing too well in the center of that line. But as the game went on, they started leaning on the Raiders and wearing them down. The other short yardage play where Tua had to roll out, that was on Tua. There was guys wide open. They said it today. There was three guys that were wide open on that play, and he just underthrew it to, I don't know who missed the catch in the middle. It was it was badly underthrown. Craycraft, I think. Craycraft. Uh, yeah, I think. No, Craycraft was wide open down the one field. One was uh, Cedric Wilson. The other one, I think, was Hill or Waddle. Not okay. sure. Okay. There's two. Just, yeah, it, it was the third and one, I think. Or, but that's that was not that was on the players, not on uh, McDaniel. Um, didn't understand the thing before halftime. Um, I don't know what they're tra trying to get a pass interference, maybe, but it didn't work out. That almost got to a hurt, but it, it's really he's he should not be on trial here. This is uh, you're out of order. <laughs> I'm the judge here, so I'm there. I'll order. Uh, how are you, Matt? What are your thoughts? Is the defend about the defender, Matt Daniel? Is he guilty of that? Uh, management situation management not guilty your honor uh, I, I i agree pretty much verbatim with what eddie just said you're at the one yard line fourth and goal this isn't joe philbin's offense you know punch it in now could they have come up with a better pit uh play absolutely uh, we've seen those better plays we've seen them uh, in nine previous games this season. Uh, and we've all sat there and gone, holy cow, that would not have worked three years ago. Um, there are times when I think that they break stuff out. Let's try this. And I'm sure it's not that flippant. And I'm sure it's not that casual. But there are times when I feel like, you know, let's see if this works. And it doesn't. Or it kind of worked. Uh, they could have... Hindsight's 2020, the fourth and one deal down there. Like Eddie said, it, the worst case scenario is you give the ball back and they're pinned deep in their own territory. Um, hindsight is 2020, and you always like to, to, to pull it apart and see what you did wrong. But the fact that he's even on trial here is a travesty. And I demand that these charges are dropped summarily and the defendant is free to go. How are you, Councillor Hallett? Is my my guilty? The defendant is guilty of bad situation management. I'm glad to take the floor right now after that dramatic presentation there by <laughs> Matt Armstrong. Should be embarrassed. Oh my God. What the what is the question here is whether or not he is good or bad at situation management within the games. Situation management covers the entire scope of the game. How are you going to call plays? How are you going to allow your defensive coordinator to come out there when you defer to receive the kick to open the game, to pick it up and start the, the, the second half with the ball? Mm -hmm. How do you choose in Frankfurt, Germany, to throw a screen pass when you have a chance to take it downfield and score and instead throw an Adam Gase special screen pass over to the left that totally turns into a pick six or a fumble six for the defense that, that shouldn't have ever happened? It's 
situation management of ensuring that you don't consistently have delays of game or rush your quarterback in hostile environments, that they can't get the play in and get up to the line of scrimmage to allow your fancy eye candy to move around the field to confuse defenses. It's knowing when you're better at third and eight than you are at third and one Mm -hmm. is a problem. However, These don't necessarily mean that he is bad at situation management. I think he is guilty of not being consistent enough where in games we see him be extremely creative in how he chooses to move his his pieces around pre-snap, how he chooses to call certain things to get these fast defenses on their heels. But that is not what what is a question here. What is a question is he bad at situation management in games and I'll have to defer and say that this is a mistrial. Uh, you can have... judge whether it's a mistrial. He's not guilty of that, though. That that was a big word salad. <laughs> was it? <laughs> uh, I witness said today that uh, let me. Oh, I said this verbatim. Uh, well, I was referred to this by Councilor Hallett. Uh, uh, he makes the impossible look possible. The, the impossible possible. The, uh, the possible look impossible. Or something like that. Uh, yes. Words, but basically, that is it. So we're going to have a hung Yuri for now, but well, I think we, we're going to talk about this again. So if, if this was saucy, let's go to our next one. Uh, the next defendant is Tua Tago Bailoa. <laughs> uh, let's see, one of the Chargers, I guess, I guess our beloved quarterback. Uh, you know, he has been accused of... Uh, for execution, uh, his stats go down as the game progress. He goes to his stats in the first quarter, and his stats, his stats go downwards every single quarter. Uh, some, some even had blamed it this week that he's the reason why the Dolphins' offense looks stalled in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to start with uh, Hansler Armstrong. Is the defendant to attack Oailoa guilty? You know what? Two is not guilty. Of it's, every, it's everybody who thinks that he's he's come down. It's everybody that thinks that he's failing. They're the guilty ones, Your Honor. They're the ones that should be on trial. Tua is performing in the National Football League against National Football League teams, except for this Friday. Every team that he'll play this year <laughs> is a bona fide professional Order. football team. <laughs> <laughs> Even the dog thought that was obnoxious. It is obnoxious. It's just as obnoxious as these fans who are complaining about his performance when he's the number one rated quarterback in the league as far as QB rating is concerned. Who's leading the league in yardage? That's right. Who's leading the league in touchdown passes? Yeah. Okay. So, in all seriousness, Your Honor, the moment. The Patriots put out on the field a defense that could combat Waddle and Hill running roughshod over everybody. It's a copycat league. Everybody's going to try to match up in that way, that too high shell. And it's a, it's incumbent upon the Dolphins, not the coach, the players, to execute the plays properly. Hold on to the ball. Run the right route, Jalen Waddle. Into his defense, he takes credit or he takes the um, responsibility for the things that need to get cleaned up. I think there's a lot of extra, probably too much uh, anger towards it. Two is innocent. Oh, your counselor Chapa, do you think he, the defendant, Tua Tagovailoa, is guilty of, uh, you know, bad execution? Bad execution overall? No. No. Um, there's some... I think he's an elite quarterback. Um, I I believe I got this from your buddy today on uh, X, Omar. He oh, said, Tua is elite quarterback. He just needs to become more clutch. And I, I kind of agree with that. Mm-hmm. He... Um, okay. Who said that? You're getting muted. It's not your turn. Hey, Omar called him elite, so, yeah. 
Yeah, he's called me really before, and uh, yeah, yeah. No, he's changed his ways a little bit. So you know, the bash do not. Uh, I'm yeah. gonna go bash Omar. I'm gonna say his, his government name Omar Kelly too much. <laughs> Back to uh, to uh, he he just does some a couple bad bad. He always has uh, there's like moments in games he he makes a bad choice. All look at Josh Allen, he makes them all the time. But now that Ken Dorsey's gone, hey, he's gonna be the best quarterback ever. Just ask Ooh. Tony. Um, it's the pass to Waddle the. At, after halftime, that was a bad pass. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, mm -hmm. The fall, that was the worst getting down I have ever seen. <laughs> Anything, just go to the ground. Don't give yourself up. You had the first down. I don't know what he was trying to do. I understand he was trying to get the first down. He got the first down. He fumbled. Fumbles are going to happen. It's just it happens too much. He's fumbled a lot. And my problem with him is on rollouts. He is not very good on a rollout. Um, he seems a lot slower this year, foot-wise. I know he had to put the weight on for the um, so he could learn how to fall and not take injuries. It just seems to have slowed him down a little. Um, but he's not guilty of. He's an elite quarterback. Counselor, I, I gotta say, I was undecided, but you gave a lot of proof of why he might be guilty <laughs> with all those things he did during that game. Well, <laughs> I, I just said him. I, he missed a wide open receiver on third and one. Three wide open receivers. I think he had three fumbles in the last four games, and the interception, yeah. sorry, just killed us. And he, he just makes bad mistakes, but he's not guilty. I mean, everybody's guilty of that. Yeah, well, you mean to say it's a collective, a collective effort, so I don't understand what you're trying to say. How about you, Counselor Hallett? Is he guilty of poor decision? Well, I think what we've proven here is that neither Counselor Armstrong nor <laughs> Counselor Tappet can actually read the pre-production script here to understand. The question is, do his efficiency stats go down as the game progresses? That is a quantitative fact right. that we can look into and see whether or not that has happened. I don't have it in front of me here, but there are actual numbers out there to show that his efficiency late in the game, maybe it's recency bias. I don't know. Can't say he did this against Baltimore Ravens or he did it against the Chargers in week one of this season, but there is no doubt about it that something is leading to his efficiency at the end of the games going down. Maybe it's the fact that top defenses or, hey, like uh, Council Armstrong said, we are playing in a big boy league where they're playing against professionals. And at the end of the game, when it is on the line, these defenses are going to step it up and they're going to bring it. And when that happens, Tua tends to get that happy feet and he doesn't seem to see the field as clearly as he should. He is guilty, as I indicated earlier in this episode, of predetermining before the ball is snapped where he is going to throw the ball all too often. And I think that also happens when they shut those routes down. He's forced into a situations where he is less efficient. So with that being the case, I have no choice but to say he is guilty of becoming less efficient as the game goes on into the end of the games. But it is up to him to turn it around. Is it an indictment for who he is as a quarterback for his career? Absolutely not. But right now, as we sit here, he is guilty. Uh, well, so, Counselor, uh, we have another home year on that one. So, for now, we, yeah, we have no very good here. So, he's, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, uh, next. There is no rebuttal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're out of time here. Next, the Van A chain. Uh, the defendant, the Van A chain, after four weeks in IR, he's back on the sideline after just a couple of series. Is accused of being unreliable. Oh, we'll see here. And here we go. Uh, let's hear. Let me, let me get this second here. Unreliable. And. Okay, unreliable. I'm going to start with two other guys, but just not charging. So let's do this quick. What are your thoughts, Matt? Is. is the one A chain unreliable as a as a running back. He was, you know, hurt after coming back to four weeks. He's unreliable. Can the Dolphins not count on him? Is he guilty of that? No, I'm throwing these charges out of the court. I'm, I'm sending the officer that even brought this to remedial training. The guy was averaging 12.1 before his injury, 
and he got his legs rolled up on in the Raiders game, and they took him out. Next case. How about you, Counselor Shepard? Is uh, the defending Devon A. Chain guilty of being unreliable? G-A-F. He is guilty. He was hurt in the preseason. He missed the first game. He gets hurt in the fourth or fifth game. He comes back for three plays. Somebody touched his knee. He fell over. They dragged him off the field. He's guilty. How about you, Counselor Halley? You, <laughs> you cannot be reliable if you're not on the field. Should have traded for DeAndre Swift. I need to throw the challenge flag on this to go back to last episode last week when we said that he should be sitting out another week. Mm -hmm. yes, if the is. question here is to whether or not he is guilty or the coach is guilty of rushing him out there on the field too soon, I absolutely think that they are. I think that this is an indictment further to Mr. Chappett's or Counselor Chappett's points that he's made in the past that this training staff on this team has a problem of yep. keeping some of the top talent on the field. Now, these are big guys. They're, they're adults, young adults at that in some cases, but they can take care of their bodies and maybe they need to do things a little bit differently. But I would love to take that time machine back just a little bit to say, hey, you know what, Devon, we don't need you. Set this one out. Put Jeff Wilson out there and let him go run through some Raiders. But in terms of the question here, he came back too soon. Is he unreliable? If that's the question, absolutely not. It's a big boy league. People injuries happen. He will be back this year. He is not guilty of that. It's too soon to, see, to say if he's guilty of being unreliable.